Hi, I'm Marty Shupak. Welcome to Shupak Sports, where we go over different tips, drills. We do interviews. Uh, we're expanding our uh, Shupak Sports YouTube channel. Uh, I appreciate everyone that subscribed, and I urge you all, please subscribe. We're going to start to have giveaways every quarter. We're going to be uh, raffling off one of my books, and all you have to do is subscribe, and you're going to be in it forever. All right, anyway, today we're gonna to talk about T-ball. We're gonna talk about transitioning from the T-ball season, hitting off a tee, to hitting a moving baseball, okay? I'm gonna talk about a few things, then I'm gonna give you a couple of drills. Some you'll recognize from before, but I, I still think they're important. I just wanna start off, I love trivia. I'm recording this on Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. And I'm going to give you a Father's Day trivia question. There was one perfect game that was pitched on Father's Day. Can you name who pitched it? Who was it against? And when was it? <clears throat> I'll give you a hint. It was pre-2000. And we'll come back to that at the end. When you go from hitting in t-ball into a league structure you want to continue the momentum if your son and daughter if they seem to be very enthusiastic you could give them a break but there's nothing wrong with continuing after the season and to throw pictures to your son and daughter now again i'm a huge believer in having multi-sport athletes so i'm not saying to do it 12 months a year, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. But if you son and daughter, if you see that they love what they were doing during the season, continue it on. And one of the best ways to continue is with different hitting drills. Remember, even starting from T-ball, and if you're going to coach youth sports or youth baseball or softball, never deny your kids batting practice or hitting. Kids live for hitting. Older kids live for batting practice. A couple of hints, and then we're going to get to a couple of drills. Number one, keep it simple. We don't want to drive kids away from baseball or softball. We want to attract them. We want to keep them enthusiastic. Make the targets hittable. And by this, I mean use bigger size balls, okay? If you're able to go to the uh, one of these big box stores in the toy section, and they have these balls that are between a, a baseball size ball and a kickball, pick a couple of those up. It's a great idea. Also, use the big bats. I've pointed this out before. Every time I'm in a store, if I see one of these yellow or this is a red bat, I end up buying two or three. As of late, some of these bats end up in my grandkids' house, but at least they're being put to good use. And remember, this is plastic, and it's good to use plastic, and it's also good to have a wiffle ball bat. All right? So this, ideally, you want to have a couple of plastic bats if you can. They're not expensive. You want to use the bigger bats, like I said, you want to reinforce success when you do something well. And when I mean well, I don't just mean hitting the ball out of the infield or over the fence. If, they make, if they're making contact, that's an achievement and point it out to them and emphasize it too. You want to emphasize contact with the bat and the ball and that perfection of the skill. All right, remember this young, don't put too much emphasis on style points. Put the emphasis on the accomplishment. We want to have achievable goals. I spoke about an eye test. As they start getting older, make sure your own son and daughter, and if you're coaching, make sure the players on your team go through uh, with an eye test. Another great technique is encourage your younger kids that are playing t-ball to play a little with their oldest brothers and sisters. I've noticed over the years, the players that are further along in development very young 
A lot of them is because they have older brothers and sisters that are playing baseball or softball. When they get older, okay, I have what I call a 520 theory. And what that means is if a player is doing 20 things wrong, I don't want you to go out and correct all 20. A lot of times, if you correct two or three or five, a lot of the other mistakes will be auto-corrected. Now, they're too young right now, but as they get older, you'll see the different mistakes kids make. Maybe uh, if they're a righty hitter, stepping towards third base rather than to the pitcher. A lot of kids, they don't follow through and they stop their swing when they make contact. And I'm gonna tell you something too. If you're a new coach, new T-ball coach, and you don't know a lot about baseball or softball or hitting, you know, in certain aspects, you're a better coach than someone that's played college, baseball, softball, or high school baseball and softball, because you don't know as much as they think they know. And that's an advantage because the less things you put in the kid's head to think about, the better off they are. Remember, I'm going to tell you something. As they get older, a relaxed hitter is a dangerous hitter. The most important goal you can do, it's not teaching them to uh, step with their front foot, move their hips, do this, do that, all these techniques. It's to be relaxed. Give me a relaxed hitter any day of the week. All right. A few things to make sure you use different types of balls. Um, I spoke about this before. This is like a wiffle ball. They have something called a pickleball too, which is a little harder. I use these mini wiffle balls, these golf wiffle balls that are, are pretty effective. Tennis balls, we all know what a tennis ball is. This is a, like, I guess it's a cushy ball. This one's coming apart. And this, again, I urge you, it's a rag ball. And I've done this at least two or three episodes where we have rags and I wrap it around with one inch or two inch masking tape. Utilize your creativity, utilize things around the house too. You don't have to go crazy with it. I don't want you to spend a lot of money, but uh, for your kids, when you're creative, it actually carries some weight in their head. They remember these things. All right, let's get to a couple of uh, drills, which some of you've seen already, but if I put them in because I think it's important. First one is the tennis racket hitting drill. If you get a hold of an old tennis racket and you have like a four inch cinder block, now here you're gonna be, the parent is gonna, of course, gonna be a little closer because you wanna bounce it. You want it to go straight up and on the downward path, the player will swing the tennis racket against the tennis ball uh, like it's a baseball bat. Kids love this, and I know we used to do it in our backyard all the time. And, uh, you know, our neighbors knew that the ball is going to go in their yards. Just be careful. You don't want to be near someone's house or near a window. But that's a great drill, all right? If you can, you could do it in space at the baseball field, too. Tennis racket hidden. All right. This is something, and again, you want to give them achievable goals. This is the kickball bounce hit. We've done this before where we roll the kickball. I've shown you in the past. This we're making it a little more difficult. And the reason we're doing this, again, we're transitioning from hitting a baseball off a tee to hitting a moving object. We want to make it as simple as possible. If you have two or three kickballs and you do it and the player or your son and daughter has one of these big bats like the red one I showed you in swings. Again, you just want them to make contact. If it's a light kickball, they'll hit the ball, all right? But I would have like two or three. Keep in mind, if it's very windy out, it's tough to do. Sometimes it's tough to really get the exact bounce where it's hittable, but work on it. When the kids hit it, they really enjoy it. Now, a lot of these drills, you're not gonna do more than like uh, three, four or five minutes each. And it's okay to jump around, okay? I showed you the rag ball. This is a rag ball toss drill. You're getting on one knee. All right, we've shown this before. 
45 degree angle, you're tossing it an underhand and they're swinging uh, the bat, hopefully the bigger the barrel of the plastic bat, you want it to make contact. Every year when I coached, I would start wrapping rag balls right around Christmas time. I would sit with my kids, we'd watch some of these Christmas specials and I would wrap the rag balls, okay? And you could use them over and over again. It's a great item. All right, so this is the rag ball toss drill. Great drill. When they get a little older, I'll give you a hint. You could wrap two different types of balls. You're not gonna try this with a T-ball player. When the player is like 11 and 12, you could hold two of the rag balls in your hand and they could, the, red, the color of the tape could be blue on one and white on the other. You could toss them up together and you could either yell blue or white and that's where the player has to strike. So if you toss them both out, you yell blue, the player's got to swing and make contact with the blue rag ball. Again, you're not going to do this with four, five, or six-year-old kids, but it's a good drill. Keep in the back of your mind when they get older. You could also do with two toss balls and yell high or low. Toss them up together. If you yell high, they have to hit the high one. If you yell, up, yell low, they hit the low one. A more advanced drill, and I probably shouldn't be getting into this, but I, since I started, you toss two balls up, you yell middle. Okay, it's an interesting drill because when you yell middle, the player's got to swing the bat between both rag balls and not make contact. All right, but anyway, this is the rag ball toss drill. Very, very good drill. And again, the name of the game is repetitions, repetitions, repetitions. You want to give your enthusiastic son or daughter repetitions in a short period of time. I spoke about this, newspaper toss. And again, newspapers are hard to come by these days because everything's on the internet. But I happen to, one of the, I'm one of these old fashioned people, I like reading newspapers. So if you do have it, you can roll up two pages at a time, toss it, just like the rag ball, they have to hit it. What's great about the newspaper, and again, I'm going backwards in a way, and I spoke about this at the beginning of the T-ball season, using newspapers mean it's a non-threatening item. And remember, there are two fears that kids have at the T-ball age, the fear of being embarrassed amongst their peers and the fear of getting hurt. And if you overcome both pairs of fears, these kids will blossom. I've said that numerous times. All right, this is a drill, and I showed this before. It's called King Arthur. They're holding a, like a broomstick. I used a inch and three-eighths closet pole, and I used rag balls, or I used wiffle balls or pickle balls, where you throw it, and they have to make contact on the outside of their hands, just like in the old days in King Arthur. Now, you could be creative. You could start putting different apparatuses on the end for these young kids. I don't care if it's a glove. I don't care if it's a milk carton. You could do whatever you want. The more you put into it, the more you're going to get out. It'll be easy to make contact. But the kids love this drill. Once they learn the nuances of the drill, they really love it. It's called the King Arthur drill. Last drill. And then we're going to close this up. We'll get to the trivia. This is just a nice, if everyone's in their bathing suit, hit the water spray. Take one of the big red bats. You're the parent. You got to be in a bathing suit. Okay. Put your thumb on the hose and then sporadically let it out. Player's got to swing the bat and he's got to hit the spray coming out. All right. Remember, I want you to make up the drills. I don't want to have to keep giving you drills. I just want to give you drills to open up your creative juices. All right. Before we get to the trivia, let's see products. Yeah, look, I wrote this book, 44 Baseball Mistakes and Corrections. The reason being, year after year, I was coaching, I came up players with the same mistakes over and over again. So I did this to help other coaches 
And I learned how to address these mistakes at the beginning of the season too. Again, you don't want to do everything at once. The season is usually like three or four months long. You take a couple of mistakes and you go over them. Just to give you an idea, I have, okay, not warming up. You have to warm up. I give reasons. Using gloves that are too big. Catch it with two hands. So overrated, okay? I know it might surprise you, but catch with two hands is overrated. I teach my players to catch with two hands and one hand. The reason being, picture a shortstop going into foul territory at sprinter's mode, a sprint, in a sprint, and I call it a sprinter's mode, and he's reaching out to get the ball. He cannot reach out both hands equally. So I maintain a player has to learn how to catch with one hand and two hands. Uh, I go over the difference between obstruction and interference, outfield throw mistakes. I have all, like I said, 44, and um, it's, a, it's a good book. It'll save you a ton of time if you're going to stay in coaching for baseball and softball. Okay, let's get back to the trivia question because I'm recording this on Father's Day. So I gave you a Father's Day question. Who is the pitcher to pitch a perfect game on Father's Day? And the answer for a lot of you old timers like me, you'll probably remember it. June 21st, 1964, Jim Bunning of the Philadelphia Phillies beat the New York Mets 6-0 in the first game of a doubleheader, pitching a perfect game. Now, I didn't write this down, but I believe from my memory, it was the seventh perfect game at the time ever pitched. I'll never forget that day. I was in Brooklyn, New York, watching the game with my grandfather who first got me into baseball on, on his little black and white TV. And it was a, it's an amazing feat. All right, we're gonna close this up. Again, please try to subscribe. You'll be in our drawing. We're gonna start that soon once we work out the kinks. And uh, please share this and give me a thumbs up. Whatever you could do to help out. I wanna try to keep this format the way it's going. And until then, I'll meet you at third base. This has been Marty Shupak.